Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on the SU-25T Frogfoot. In this lesson, we're going to go over the various countermeasure systems that are offered to you by the SU-25T. The SU-25T offers several different kinds of ways to find, track, and defeat threats, the first of which is the radar warning receiver, which is this panel right here with all the little LEDs on it. Now if you remember in the first mission, where we started up our aircraft, um, I told you to turn this off, and I was kind of telling you to do the right thing, but I, I phrased it wrong. The RWR radar warning receiver, um, that's not the... The radar warning receiver in the SU-25T has two different modes. One mode tracks all targets that are currently tracking you with the radar, and the second mode only tracks targets that have a solid lock on you. Now when we turned it off by pushing right shift R, all we did was set it to the only track things that are actively locking me mode, whereas um, during this lesson we're going to turn it back into the let everything track, or show me everything that's tracking me mode. So I'm going to turn that on by pushing right shift and R, and we immediately get a signature from something that's painting us with radar. Uh, don't worry though, this is uh, just an AWACS plane. Um, now that beeping, that constant beeping can get very annoying really quickly. So rather than turn off your radar or switch it to the, uh, switching it to the only show me locks mode, you can turn the volume of the beeping down, and the AWAX has stopped tracking me for a second, so I'm going to wait until it comes back before I uh, show you the uh, volume uh, modification in action. But basically, if you hold right alt and push the comma or period keys, uh, or the less than or greater than keys, um, it lowers or raises the volume respectively. So now that we've got the beeping back, I'm going to turn down the volume by pushing right alt and the comma key a couple of times to turn it down. You'll notice it gets a lot quieter. You can actually turn off all sounds if you want. You can, you can lower it to the point where it doesn't make any noise, and it just shows you threats, but uh, that I don't like doing that. I would rather turn it down low so that it's in the background. That way I know something's pinging me, but... Uh, I don't completely forget about it. Let's go over some of these lights. <clears throat> You'll notice that there's an outer ring of LEDs that have numbers in them. There's a middle ring of green LEDs, and there is a inner ring of like tick mark LEDs, little dashes that go around the aircraft. Um, there's also a red circle that's kind of behind the visual representation mm -hmm. of your aircraft, and there is the two LEDs in the uh, center of the aircraft. Um, and I'm wondering why. It must be a texture bug. The bottom one, I believe, says B when it's off. Let me. Yeah, the textures are wrong on those. <laughs> the, uh, the lit up version of the top one has the B, and the lit up version of the bottom one has the H. Um, as we can see here, but uh, I never noticed that before. Anyway, um, you don't have to worry about the B and the H. Uh, the center, the center lights will get into. And you'll also notice that there's a bunch of tick mark LEDs along the bottom of the panel, and uh, underneath each one of those tick marks, uh, there is a letter that indicates what that stands for. But uh, we'll go over that in just a second. Uh, first, I want to talk to you about the outer ring. The outer ring um, shows you what direction the radar that's painting you is coming from of your primary target, uh, primary threat target. So, right now, you can see that we're being painted. The, the rear right of our aircraft is where the direction that the uh, radar is coming from, and uh, we lost it for a second here again. So give it a second, it'll pop back up. But basically, your primary threat will illuminate the outer ring and show you where it's coming from. 
the middle ring uh, is an indication of where any threats are coming from. So not just your primary threat, but anybody who's painting you with a radar will illuminate one of those little green LEDs on the middle row and show you what direction its radar source is coming from. Um, here we go. And as you can as you can see, we have our primary threat coming at us from probably about 45, since it's between 30 and 50. Um, and the middle, now we're at 30 degrees, the middle LED is lit up to show us that that is a threat. So the middle ring is, there's a threat out there, and then the outer ring is, this is your primary threat, be careful. The inner ring, the circle of tick marks that ends in that arrow, um, indicate the strength of the radar signal that's hitting you. So you can kind of gauge your distance to the threat based on how lit up that is, and it spins from right to left. So the leftmost being, oh god, the radar has pretty much full strength on you. Uh, and the far right being, there's something out there, it's quite a ways away, you don't have to worry about it. Um, so right now we're, we're well within the, uh, the uh, radar range of our primary threat. Um, the red LED that's kind of behind the plane, the one that's that the plane is superimposed on top of, means that something has a solid lock on you and is probably about to engage you. That will also be accompanied by a very high-pitched tone, solid tone, um, to indicate that you're being locked, and that will change to a staccato tone um, when somebody's fired at you. The two LEDs in the middle of the plane indicate whether the primary threat is above you, below you, or at the same level, the same altitude as you. Um, if both of them are lit up like this, the target is on the same altitude as you. Uh, plus or minus 15 degrees of altitude from your current altitude. And that will also, I believe it changes based on distance as well. So if there's a target that's, your your inner ring is way over on the right to indicate that it's way far away, and it's within 15 degrees of you altitude, it might be higher than if something is, you know, right up against you and uh, showing that it's at the same altitude. Now the LEDs along the bottom here, oh, uh, let me touch on this too. You'll notice that you have indicators for 90, 50, 30, and 10 degrees on the left and right of the front of your aircraft, but once you get behind your aircraft, there is only a left side and right side LED, and um, that is how that is exactly what it means. Uh, when you're closing in on a target, since the Su-25T is a uh, suppression of enemy air defense aircraft, it is more concerned with what threats are in front of it than what threats are behind it. Um, it's good to know that there's something behind you, and good to know about what direction it's coming at you from, um, but ho hopefully it's not going to be an enemy aircraft, because hopefully you'll have uh, combat air patrol up to protect you. Um, but it's, it's good to know that they're there, but it doesn't track them as specifically. Uh, the line of dash marks along the bottom indicates what type of radar is being pointed at you from your primary, well, just like the center, or just like the middle circle and the uh, outer circle on the top uh, RWR, the green light that's lit up just indicates that there is a type of that radar painting you. So right now the W is lit up, the W stands for AWACS, so there is an AWACS that is painting me. Um, the solid light above it, the amber light above it, indicates that that is my primary threat. So if I had an AWACS and a fighter and a ground radar all targeting me, all of those letter indications would be lit up, but only the most threatening would have the amber light over it. So let me go over what each light is, starting from the right. You have your AWACS, um, which is represented by a W. 
Uh, moving to the left, you have early warning radar. Moving to the left, you have short range radar. Moving to the left, you have medium range, long range, and fighters. So if the far left light is lit up, and the symbol underneath it is lit up, that means that your primary threat is a fighter, and it is painting you. If just the F shows up, it means that there's a radar out there that's that's looking at you, but uh, it's not your primary threat yet. It might be further off in the distance, you might not be in its engagement en envelope yet, um, but it's there, and your RWR should let you know, as long as the radar is on and seeking targets. <coughs> So that is the RWR. The uh, SC-25T flight manual has more information on the RWR. Uh, I recommend you give it a read. It's only a couple pages long. Uh, it begins on page 18 if you type it into your PDF uh, reader. Uh, but if you go by the page numbers that are on the bottom of each page in the PDF, uh, I believe it starts on page 13 or 14. Um, now the SC-25T also comes with, and I'm going to switch to the exterior view here real quick, These guys on the end of the wings, on the end of the uh, the very last pylons with the little black painting on the front and back, uh, are your ECM pods. And it's good to know that they exist because in the future they might be modeled, but right now they really don't have any effect on um, enemy radars. Uh, ECM pod is basically an electronic countermeasure. Once you get within engagement range, if you turn them on, it's supposed to kind of make it more difficult for an enemy uh, to target you, but currently in this game, as of version 1.2.6, uh, they don't really do anything. So, they're on my plane so that I could show you, but uh, generally speaking, I don't even mount them anymore because they just take up a slot. It, it would be better served to put something else, an offensive weapon, on, on, on those pylons. Um, the SU-25T also has an IR jammer, which you can activate by pushing left shift and E, and you'll notice that the light in the lower left of your cockpit turns on the IRCM, infrared countermeasure, and uh, that is just a rear hemisphere infrared jammer. So if somebody fires on you from behind, uh, well, if you're going into an area that has a bunch of SAMs, it will mess with the guys who are behind you, but nothing in front of you. Uh, and speaking of IR, uh, I want to touch on the subject that the RWR does not do anything to warn you about infrared-guided missiles. Um, if, if an infrared-guided missile is fired on you, you just have to see it, or have a wingman that sees it and lets you know where it's coming from. There is not, uh, to my knowledge, any way to see where they're being fired from or that they're being fired at all. Uh, you really have to keep your eye out for them or fly high enough so that they don't uh, don't get a chance to engage you. And speaking of flying high enough, uh, all missiles in this game have an engagement range. I mean, obviously, a range at which they're going to be most useful against targets. Um, one of the easiest ways to spoof a radar-guided SAM is to fly outside of its outside of the missile's engagement range. If you're at the very edge of the missile's effective envelope and somebody fires at you and you simply turn around, the missile's not going to be able to hit you because it's going to run out of gas and uh, momentum before it can meet up with you. Uh, that being said, it doesn't always work. Uh, it usually only works if you're right on the edge of the envelope. Um, but it is one way to help you defeat a missile. Um, another thing, uh, another way to, to beat a missile is outmaneuvering it. Like I said, they have an effective, an effective engagement envelope, and that's based on how much fuel they have in them and uh, what altitude they're being fired from. Now, a ground-based SAM is being fired from the ground, so it has to, it has to use up a lot of its fuel to get airborne to begin with. Um, so if you're starting from a very high altitude and they fire a SAM at you, the first thing that you should do, generally speaking, this is very general, and this is going to vary from engagement to engagement, um, but generally speaking, if they fire at you 
it's going to be using fuel to, to give itself enough energy to get up to where you are. Um, any maneuvering that you do, turning or, or raising or lowering your altitude, is going to cause it to use that much more of its kinetic energy. Um, basically, it's going to be able to maintain its kinetic energy until it runs out of fuel. After that point, it needs to... I mean, every, every aer aerobatic maneuver that it does is going to deplete it of energy. It's not going to be able to keep up with your maneuvering. So when you're, when you're being fired upon by an enemy ground um, SAM or uh, enemy, you just want to maneuver the hell out of your plane and hope that you outmaneuver the, uh, the missile. Uh, another couple of things that you can do, the SU-25T has both uh, chaff for radar-based missiles and flares for infrared-based missiles. And um, using those in conjunction with maneuvering is uh, the best way to defeat missiles. But hopefully you never get to the point where you need to uh, use those. You, you, you really want to try and fly smart enough to where or cautious enough, I should say, to where uh, enemy SAMs, enemy ground-based missiles aren't going to be fired at you to begin with. Now your countermeasure keys by default are insert and delete. So the insert key deploys chaff and the delete key deploys flares. And uh, like I said, the chaff is good for radar-based weapons and the flares are good for um, infrared-based heat-seeking missiles. There is a deploy countermeasure button, but I don't know what it is. Um, if you are interested in deploying both at the same time, you are just going to have to read the manual or go check your control configuration and figure out what that button is. But it shouldn't be too difficult to determine whether you're being fired on by an infrared or a radar guided missile um, based on your RWR. If you're seeing a missile fired at you and your RWR isn't doing anything, pretty good chance that that's an infrared missile. Um, likewise, if your RWR is solid toning you because you're being locked and then it starts going staccato and then you see a missile, um, pretty good chance that that's a radar guided missile. And chaff and flare are not magical solutions. Um, it's very, very difficult to outmaneuver a missile, especially in a heavy aircraft such as the SU-25T. So your best bet is to be as cautious as you can possibly be. Um, if you start seeing um, long range, medium range, or short range radars painting you, um, or fighters, you're gonna wanna find out where your primary threat's coming from and be very cautious in that direction. You're gonna wanna um, almost zigzag back and forth as you make your way closer to the target until you can identify the threat and neutralize it. Um, there's really no safer way to do it. It's gonna take, it's gonna take time. <laughs> uh, unless the mission doesn't have any uh, ground-based threats or, or enemy aircraft, then the enemy didn't set themselves up properly, but it's gonna make it a lot easier on you. Um, so speaking of weight, you'll notice that in this mission I have all of my weapons loaded and I'm going to uh, hold left control W and jettison them all. You'll notice that the ECM pods do not jettison. Um, I think that's kind of lame, but they don't. So uh, if, you, if you have them mounted, you're stuck with them. But we have just made our aircraft significantly lighter and more maneuverable. Uh, now that we've gone over the basics of the radar warning receiver and missiles and kind of how to defeat them, uh, and we have an AWACS painting us already, I'm going to disable my autopilot and I'm going to change my waypoint to waypoint 4 which I know has several radar guided uh, threats. I'm also going to increase my throttle all the way and gain a bit of altitude. The higher your altitude the more kinetic energy you're gonna have. Um, even if you just do the simplest maneuver and turn away from where the missile is being fired from, you can also set yourself into a dive and gain 
a significant amount of speed by diving from um, a higher altitude. Um, also, when you're diving from a higher altitude, you are going to want to be a little bit more careful on what kind of maneuvers you do, depending on your speed. Uh, the faster you go, the more likely you are to tear the wings off of your aircraft. So I'm going to climb to about 4,500 meters, and I'm going to maintain my direction towards waypoint 4. Now I have um, labels turned on, which you can turn on or off by pushing left shift and F10. And you'll notice that uh, ground targets are indicated by little red dots. Oops. I'm trying to gain altitude, not lose it. So as I get closer to this uh, waypoint 4, I'm actually going to go up to 5,500 meters to try and get above the clouds a little bit. Notice I keep glancing at my WR just to see when the uh, radar SAM start tracking me. Apparently, I cannot maintain a climb today. It's because I'm not using trim, so I'm going to trim it to a climb. All right, let's climb to 6,500 meters. And you'll notice that my RWR just started beeping at me from the front. You'll notice that I have uh, my AWACS is at the back there. Uh, the fact that it's my primary has now gone away. It's now just a radar signature coming from my rear right. Um, I have a radar, I have an AWACS painting me, which is why the W is lit up. I also have a short range radar painting me from the front, which is why the S is lit up. It's 10 degrees off of my nose, and the signal strength is about three quarters of the way, two two thirds of the way around. So it's it's getting stronger. I'm getting closer to it, um, and it's below me. So the uh, lower dot on that center indicator is lit up. I'm going to turn my track IR on so that I can keep a better eye on this thing. Uh, I highly recommend you get some kind of head tracking, especially in this game. I have not used it up until this point because you can pretty much get by without it if you're not trying to see everything at once and maneuver and, and do all these things at the same time. But at this point I am turning it on because um, I want to have the best chance possible at defeating any enemy missiles. So all those little red dots down there are enemy uh, anti-air stations, and you'll notice that I put them off of my uh, off the left side of my plane. You'll also notice that the radar signature is getting stronger and stronger. Um, the reason I put them off the left side of my plane or my wing. hard to see, but they're down in that general direction. You can see them when I zoom out, but not when I zoom in. The reason that I'm putting them off of my wing is, like I said, I'm going to fly a zigzag pattern to get closer to them to try and identify where they actually are. Um, also, it makes it a lot quicker for me to turn away if they end up firing on me. Um, if I'm already halfway turned around. So the AWACS threat has gone away. 
that W's disappeared and the middle circle has uh, turned off as well. Oh, there he is. But the uh, SAMs are still there. The short range radar is still my primary threat and it's in my rear uh, left quadrant. I'm going to go ahead and turn back into them. drop my altitude a little bit. I'm going to try and get one of them to fire at me, and I'm probably going to die. So I'm just I'm just letting you know that right now. Um, any missiles that come up are going to be radar guided, uh, I'm going to assume, because uh, I'm being painted by enemy radar. Um, and once I'm locked and being fired on... Oh, I'm locked. So I'm going to turn this way put it off my right side now since that's where they are. I'm being locked. Uh, it's a it's still a solid tone so that means that I'm not being fired on yet. Oh, just been fired on. And there we go. Sam launch. I'm going to dive. I'm going to give myself full throttle. I'm going to start popping chaff like it's going out of style. I'm going to try and defeat this missile. I think I did. Nope, there it is. I'm going to start climbing now. Oh, see, I was outside of its engagement range. So they fired at me, but it, it, I'm, I'm too far away for the missile to be effective. And it's going to depend on what kind of... Um, anti-air threat you're going up against. Some of them are going to be easier to spoof with chaff and flare. Um, some of them are not. Some of them you're, you're pretty much going to have to outmaneuver the missile. Um, and there are several ways to, to get around that. Like I said, the, the, the easiest is to turn away from the target and fly as fast as you can and get the hell out of there and come back for another pass. And I'm being fired on again, and there's the SAM launch. So I'm going to drop my plane, start popping chaff and flare. You can see the missiles turning to reach me. I'm going to turn away. Here comes the missile. I should still be out of its range. I'm still popping chaff. There we go. You'll also notice that my pilot has started breathing. Uh, that is a new addition uh, in 1.2.6. I like it. Um, there is also going to be a point when you run out of chaff and flare. And I'm not entirely... oh, there we go. No, I don't know where the indicator is on how much countermeasures you have left. But eventually you'll run out. <laughs> and then you have to be really careful. Um, so I know which target the SAM is, and I can actually fly around and have it fire at me until it runs out of missiles, um, if I wanted to. Uh, generally speaking, I'm going to have some kind of weapons. I took them off again so that I could be more maneuverable, and weapons aren't covered in this tutorial, uh, but they will be in future tutorials that are coming soon. Um, it's also possible to completely outmaneuver missiles without using chaff or flare. If you're right on your engagement range like I am right here, just kind of flirting with them, um, just by turning away and, and increasing my speed, uh, I can just outrun them. And I'm being fired on again. Where's this coming from? Oh, shit, there it is. And I think I just missed... I just think I just outmaneuvered that missile. Oh, there's another one. Popping flare chaff. Timing. Missed by that one as well.
And there are also a lot of uh, those uh, shilkas down there. Like that guy, uh, oh, missile launch. This one might actually get me. Hydraulic yep. failure. I've been hit. Hydraulic so at this point, failure. there's nothing to do but eject when you're right side up. Hydraulic failure. Which is not working. Oh no! Hydraulic failure. Well, that's what happens when you try and do a tutorial and uh, tempt fate too much. The enemy SAMs are very deadly. Uh, especially in a heavier aircraft, a heavier, harder to maneuver aircraft like the uh, SU-25. Uh, here's a Shilka. It's got a radar dome on it. That's that little circle thing on the top of it. Uh, but it's strictly an anti-air weapon. Uh, I'm, it doesn't have missiles. It's, it's strictly a gun-based uh, anti-air weapon. Um, these guys generally have a shorter engagement range because they're gun-based. Um, let me see. That guy over there, the SA-9 Strela, is, I believe, this guy. Yep. You'll notice that he's got actual missile launchers. And you'll notice that you can actually see the missiles in this guy's launchers. He hasn't fired them yet. So this is not the guy that I was uh, evading. That SA-8 might be the guy that I was evading. And you'll notice that he's putting them away because now he doesn't have any targets to track. Let me see if I can find that SA-8. You... Nope, he's still got his missiles, too. It's not the ZU... Not the ZU-23s. It's not the Shilkas. Hmm. Interesting. I do not know which... Which, uh... Sam was actually firing at me. Oh, this guy's closed his door, so I can't tell. Anyway, that concludes our lesson on countermeasures. And you will get lucky uh, a couple of times, but then eventually, uh, if you're not... It, it, uh, it's, it's obviously easier to try and avoid things if you're not trying to teach people how to avoid them as well. But um, it is a very, very difficult thing to avoid uh, anti-air missiles. Um, the best thing to do is to use the RWR to see what's coming up, what you're, what you're up against. Uh, try and determine where that target is. Uh, if you have labels on, it's, it's obviously going to be easier than if you turn them off. Um, if you turn them off, it's very hard to see targets until you're usually within their engagement envelope. Um, but using the RWR, uh, determining where targets, where enemy uh, anti-air is going to be, um, and then avoiding them, or trying to find them and target them before they engage you, is generally the best way to go. Uh, being fired upon is not something that you want to invite, and you're going to want to try and avoid that as much as you can, especially since the ECM pods in the SU-25T uh, don't do anything against them. Uh, in the current versions. And they might change that in the future. It might be modeled at some point. Um, but right now, it, it really isn't. Um, so your best your best bet with countermeasures is to just try and uh, identify and avoid, <laughs> or identify and engage, if that's um, if that's possible, if that's, if that's, if that's something that you're, if, if it's uh, feasible to do. Um, as you can tell, I, I, as, you, as you saw, I dodged three or four missiles and then got taken down by the fifth um, so definitely not not an easy task and like I said it, it changes with every engagement based on what you're up against and um, the capabilities of the missiles that they're firing at you uh, it might be easier to get in close and, and take something out or it might be next to impossible to get close and take something out you might need to have um, some anti-radar missiles uh, equipped to be able to deal with those threats um, or have a flight in your mission that can do that for you um, if you're tasked with other 
things. So it, it, it really, really varies mission to mission. And um, you should plan these things out in advance, as advanced as you can possibly be. But uh, those are basically uh, the countermeasure systems of the SU-25T. I hope this tutorial helped, and uh, definitely recommend that you get up and practice some flying. I'm going to link to this mission. Um, it's actually a mission that's been put together by the Hoggett guys um, of the Reddit sub, the, the subreddit um, Hoggett. And uh, it's uh, their training map that runs on their dedicated server. You can also just join their dedicated server and fly around on it. You don't need the map first. DCS downloads maps from the hosts. <coughs> um, I've modified the map a little bit for my own use. But generally speaking, um, here's Kutaisi. Here's where we start. Um, if you start in one of the air start planes, you start around here. And waypoint 4 is where all of the uh, anti-air, enemy anti-air um, are located. Um, it's a great map to, to get up on and, and just fly around and, and try your hand at various things. Um, and you don't have to quit the map to get put back into a plane. If uh, you do get shut down, you can just do uh, left alt and B to bring up the briefing. Click back. Um, I'm playing it as a mission, so I can select a different plane this way. And then click fly. Oh, that's weird. It started with my cockpit off. Um, so if that happens to you, if it starts with your cockpit off, you can hold left alt and F1 to turn off your plane. Um, and then you just get your HUD and the kneeboard is on the left. And uh, I believe that's supposed to be the control... Oh, maybe that's the that's the Cheval. No. Yeah, that's the Cheval screen. So if you switch to air to ground mode and turn on your uh, camera, that's what you get. Um, if you're playing on their server after you die, uh, I believe it prompts you again for what plane you want to start off in again. And I picked an air start, so I started right about there. And then if I changed to waypoint 4 and headed towards there, I could practice with my countermeasures. Anyway, hope this helps. Good flying, and uh, remember to drop your weapons before you go up against any uh, radar SAMs, because the amount of maneuverability that you gain is incredible when you're not fully loaded down. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next tutorial, which will uh, begin our weapons lessons.